sort of the opposite end, both what I would consider a uh, proper ninja toe. Uh, again, different tools for different jobs. This is for stealth. This is purely something to wear in public. But let's look at the example of what of what is sold as a ninja sword. And in my opinion, is actually offensive. Here you go. The straight ninja sword. Like you could buy out of any crappy catalog. Sold as a ninja sword. With your um, big square suba. With its, for all intents and purposes, those 90 degree angles are somewhat sharp. Wear this, wear this sword on your back and then roll over onto it. Or accidentally just land on your back and have the square of that suba stick you. See, see what you think of it. And this straight blade. Standard size suka. And a, this, this sword isn't much shorter than a standard katana. But the most offensive part of it is this straight blade. There's no such thing as a straight ninja sword. That is a, what you'd call a fantasy sword, uh, a movie sword. Like, you might as well be carrying this sword from uh, Blade 2 and call it a ninja sword, or from G.I. Joe. This is a movie prop design. That's where the straight sword came into birth. Not originally, obviously hundreds of years before uh, the ninja even existed, the early swords in, in Japan were straight until they figured out that a straight blade work, excuse me, that a curved blade works much better at the job of cutting. But because of the ninja movie craze, we ended up with, again, this offensive piece of junk. Don't buy a sword that looks like this. Don't buy a sword that's called a ninja sword. Don't waste your money. I don't care what it's made out of. I don't care how sharp it is. I don't care how much it costs. This is a toy. A sharp toy, but a toy. Uh, this one is made by Hanway, and it's called a practical ninja sword. Would someone like to tell me what the hell is practical about this? There's not one thing practical about it. The size is completely impractical. impractical. The square suba is impractical. The straight blade is thoroughly impractical. Some of you will argue, oh, well, no, the straight blade because it's made for thrusting or because it's shorter. Well, first of all, this isn't short at all, although you can buy shorter ones, obviously, through other crappy catalog services and whatnot. But the fact that it's short doesn't mean it's supposed to be straight. The fact that it's short and for thrusting necessarily, again, doesn't need to be straight. And then here's the answer as to why the straight blade theory is crap. I, unfortunately, I don't have a tanto, but the smallest blade, the full-length katana, the mid-size wakazashi, then the tanto, which is essentially 10 to 15 inches, as short as it gets. And yet every tanto you see will be curved, regardless of the fact that a tanto is incredibly short, regardless of the fact that tanto is mainly just a thrusting blade, hence the Tanta tip, which is more of a thrusting tip than a slashing tip, this is a myth. Do not waste your money on a sword that's called a ninja sword and sold in any catalog. I'll explain where this myth comes from, because it certainly doesn't come from factual, historical blades. Up until the mid-1960s, Japanese ninja movies always had curved... You see, this is pretty short, and it almost looks straight, but it certainly isn't straight, it's curved. Japanese ninja movies had curved swords in them. The ninjas carried, quote-unquote, ninja swords, but they were curved. Someone had the bright idea in, in the mid-1960s said, oh, you know, we need to make a bundle of prop swords for this next movie. It's going to cost this much money to produce them. But the prop guy says, oh, you know, these swords are so short anyways, and we're swinging them around the whole time. 
no one even notices that they are actually even curved. You know, we'd save a lot of money if we just made them straight. We wouldn't have to make curved blades. We wouldn't have to make curved sayas. We just make straight sayas, straight blades, and no one will ever even care. No one will notice. Who's going to notice this old black and white ninja movie, ninjas throwing little swords around? You can barely tell that they're curved or not curved anyways in most of the movies. Who's going to care? Little did they know, they would start a myth that would never go away. To this day, people think that this is a ninja sword. This straight piece of junk with this ridiculous suba that would do just as much damage to you as it would somebody else if you damn well fell on it. You go a step further and you have, you have swords that you can buy where the suba, instead of 90 degrees with the blade, is like that. So the tip is even pointed into your shoulder blade when you're wearing it on your back. Ridiculous. This is not a ninja sword. Do not waste your money on a straight bladed sword. There are some people on YouTube, uh, Greg, you know who you are, who claims to have a sword like this handed down to him for generations in his family. That's an outright lie. The sword he's holding is a united cutlery or a, chin, or a, a, a handway blade like this. Uh, I, I, it's a straight catalog blade. You get out of any catalog, I guarantee the blade he's showing is not more than 10 years old. Now, he's an instructor, and he obviously has some skill, which I appreciate, but the simple fact that he'll lie about something so basic as this Holding up a sword that looks damn near just like this, with its shiny chrome blade, long and straight and ridiculous, and say, oh, this, this sword I've had for generations, it's been handed down in my family. He's lying to you, which means if he'll lie about one thing, he'll lie about anything. So unfortunately, all the videos he's posted, which many of them are very interesting, I can't take any, uh, I can't take them to heart. I, if he lied to me about this, which is an outright bold lie, which I actually can't believe he would do, because anybody who knows anything knows that there's no such thing as a ninja sword that looks like this, especially one that's been handed down for generations. So Greg, I appreciate some of your skills, but you lie. And if you lie about one thing, you lie about anything. Look for a blade that's curved. Bottom line, don't buy a straight ninja sword. If it's straight, it's not a real sword. It's not based on any reality. It's based on ninja movies, which started to sprout up in the mid-1960s as a way, as just a simple way to make a cheaper movie prop. That's all it is. So as the years went by, movies came along that copied the other ninja movies, and they said, oh, well, copy that sword. And they noticed that in some of those movies, they had longer, they seemed to have long sukas. But again, they'd have these straight blades in them. Okay, what the hell? Who's going to care? No one's going to make a big deal out of it. Who would know that generations later, decades later, everyone would be buying up these straight bladed ninja swords and thinking they're carrying something that resembles anything in actuality? It doesn't. This is, this is a proper Shinobi Nogato. This is a proper Shinobi Nogato. Don't waste your money on the straight blades. They're toys, plain and simple. I don't care if they're expensive, I don't care if they're sharp, they're toys. Again, this piece of junk, referred to as practical, and that Suba is not practical. That Suba is practical. It's rounded, it's a little bit smaller, it's still enough to use as a tool if you might. You can actually step on it if you need to. But if you land on it, if you roll over into it, that square corner doesn't exist. It's nice, it's round. It's a little bit smaller profile, so it's not sticking into your back as well. And ornate. No, People say, oh, well, Ninja Blades, uh, they're straight because uh, it was just a cheaper sword to save money, easier to make it straight. 
Well, they're certainly not going to have these ornate Subas with their fancy little designs on them. They're going to have real plain, real simple Subas. No design. That's practical. A blade this long? That's not practical. Especially if you're trying to be stealth. This is no, not any shorter than a standard katana, practically. This blade's going to get hung up on everything. It's not going to work well in confined spaces. It's too long. It's not, there's nothing practical about it. That is a practical blade. Nice, short blade. Standard suka. Uh, you know, with, with these 14-inch long sukas, they are nice. But again, these are meant for something to wear in public. People would see this. This would be an exposed suka. You wouldn't wear this for stealth if you're trying to, you know, crawl under things and over things. Completely impractical. For cutting, there's a reason these are curved. They cut better. It's a more practical design. These do not cut better. Impractical. Offensive. The name of this being practical katana, practical ninja sword, excuse me, ninja toe, excuse me, that's offensive. Any sword that looks like this, don't waste your money on it. Going back to a real practical ninja toe, the simple chinesse blade. Standard suka on a wakazashi, the mid-length blade. The original Ninja Toe, the original stealth setup. So do yourself a favor, get something like this if you just want to get a more legitimate Ninja Toe.